As things stand, the Guardians will at least avoid their fifth extra inning game. We'll see because we're recording this in the bottom of the seventh inning. The bad news is the Guardians let another game slip away on a road trip that uh, had a lot of potential but kind of fizzled out. We'll get into all of that. Some players returning from the injured list and how to fit them into the roster. And what do the Guardians need to do in May to hold up this promising start to the season? It's time for Lockdown Guardians. You are Locked On Guardians, your daily podcast on the Cleveland Guardians. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, everyone, and and thank you for coming to the show today. (laughs) Thank you. Thank you. Um, After a loss, numbers go down. After a game like this, I'm expecting. I I, I appreciate all four of you who showed up to watch. Um, Yeah. Of late, I would say, based on the activeness of comments, uh, Scott, John, David. Um, yeah, those would be my guesses amongst the everydayers. Uh, I do want to take a moment and give a thank you to eBay Motors. Uh, from brakes to exhaust kits and beyond, eBay Motors has over 120 million parts to keep your ride or die alive. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to bring home that big win. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only, exclusion supply, eBay guaranteed fit, only available to U.S. customers. I don't know why you'd want to sync it up. If you want to sync it up, uh, 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 <laughs> you, don't do it. Just don't do it to yourself. It's fine. The game's over. We started Diaz, recording. It was three, it was Diaz four to just, two. Now it's seven to two. Diaz so just had that. We can, hit. yeah, we can just officially say the game is over. And the guy, at least we know uh, we'll who's going for trip. Sam Henches when he gets activated tomorrow. Uh, this Friday, was, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, I mean, this has been a brutal. There's a lot of ups and downs. There's some things to talk about. You know, Bo Naylor is had a rough game defensively. Um, Arias did too. Gar- yeah. Arias has had. Uh, Arias was not good, but the uh, the other side of him would say is like it was a little overhyped in the negativity. <laughs> like at the same time, and then, I mean, let's be honest. At the end here, I mean, this is Tyler Beatty. Uh, it doesn't matter because he walked two guys and hit another like that's just you can't do that he he did so much damage to himself in this one that that's yeah never found the I strike mean, zone it's bad let's get into the positive real quick because when we were finishing there up were Thursday's positives? episode not in this game no well no logan allen pitch well so uh, you that. know so we'll talk- rokio has continued to, to have a few p- uh, moments where he's putting things together and uh will brennan's had a two-hit game so, uh, you know, it's, and, and, and it wasn't that like, I think Logan Allen would have had a much better game if not for, I know everyone wants to fixate on, um, and this is the thing, this is my minor defense of Arias. He's been abysmal at the plate of late, but he was covering ground to get those catches. Most center fielders don't yeah. get to them. He has to make that catch though. He has to do it. Getting there was impressive. I mean, the only guy I think if they called it Miles straw, he's the guy who makes it And that diving catch. Most guys don't get there. The big sin there was swatting the ball away. So he's covering yeah, ground, that. but the lack of experience is just showing. And yeah. yeah, let's quickly, let's quickly just kind of throw, grow through some things from Thursdays from third, from Wednesday's game, because we didn't, we were just kind of finishing recording as Thursday's game wrap Wednesday's game wrapped up. So Stephen Kwan had the, the go ahead hit in the 10th inning. And then he had the go ahead or he had the game winning catch in third to second. What a good to see that him that. take over. And yeah, great, great effort by him in extra innings because you know, the game in Atlanta uh, where he got picked off at third base, that kind of yep. cost them an extra inning. So, Quan this time in extra innings comes through, so that's good to see. Overall, you know, the Guardians are going to wind up two and four on this road trip, and it's not terrible when you look at it that way, but, you know, you had chances to win the Atlanta series. You had chances to win this Thursday game in Houston, so you could have gone four and two very easily. So, if you want to look at it, you know, glass – half full you had chances to be two good teams i know people are going to say the astros record isn't good but uh they're i, I hate to say it, they're still a good team i don't think they're buried and they're still a better team than the record says they are because their pitching is actually going to pick up they got framber valdez yeah, back but they're going to get the problem. they didn't face uh, any of that that part of it like, no, they, they, faced, got, they faced verlander and they beat him so yeah and that it, was but, the big uh, start they saw spencer arigetti Again, we'll I'll wait to get it, but like he had more one, two, three innings in this game than he had in his entire season leading up to this point, and he had never gotten out of the fifth until today, and he had more strikeouts today, I believe, than his last two. Like they made Spencer Arigetti look good when he has been one of the worst pitchers in baseball, and he is going down tomorrow. Like that is that's also a part of it. Like they they it was a poor game. 
I mean, it was just a poor game in, in about yeah, every they had three aspect. walks. They had three walks against him. They certainly had their chances. They didn't <laughs> put a lot of good balls in play. I like that. John Singleton. And, like that was almost a, a bat flip on a sack fly. So yeah, so not not a good finale. Again, hat, glass half full. You could say that you had a chance to go four and two against two good teams on this road trip, and then you know, glass half empty is you did a lot of things that were frustrating to to blow those chances that that weren't great. You know, with the Hargatis thing, the Bo Naylor issues, the defensive issues overall in this game. Not the just even offense. Like they didn't have enough well, offense. Oh, yeah, you're week. not going to score. You're not going to beat the Astros scoring two runs. Not in this ballpark. Yeah. Anyway, they, they, they got three runs on Wednesday, which was, you know, lucky that got them a win. So I will say, at least the starting pitching is coming around. I thought Logan Allen looked pretty good. Now Pedro Avila just hit somebody. That's great. Um, this inning's just never going to end. Maybe David Fry will pitch the rest of this game. I kind of, I wish they um, just gone to Gattis here. Like, he needs to get, try to get the yips out or whatever it's wrong. Like, maybe. this is about as yeah. low impact as you can come. It is. So Logan Allen looked pretty good, and... You know, obviously, we talked off air about how Bo Naylor cost him some extra pitches a couple of times. So he really could have been better than his his final line suggested. So on this road trip, you got Tanner Bybee with the best start of the year by any Guardians pitcher going seven innings. You got a great start by Tristan McKenzie, even though he got hit hard a little bit. I think we're going to take that as a win that he got seven innings and he looked strong. And then Logan Allen, probably his second best start of the year. He was the last pitcher to go six innings before. You know, uh, Bybee finally broke that string. Or, I'm sorry, not Bybee. Um, ben Lively did it before. But, you know, Logan, ever since that Seattle series, which was early in the year, has been struggling. And he was better against the Astros. So three of your most important pitchers right now that are healthy are pitching well. So I feel pretty good about that. That's my takeaway from this road trip, at least. And then uh, it's I'll a choose di- to hope that <laughs> the other stuff can figure it out. That, that's okay. That's still the one thing they need, they need to turn around was the starting pitching. The fact that you're that Bybee dominated a great Atlanta lineup and Allen and McKenzie both look good against a good Houston lineup. But it's, it's I a half a good lineup as a, as a with good Houston. Step. It's like it's still half of a good lineup. The bottom half is not great. Let's be honest. Once it's you get past their face so far this year and uh, no, the guy struggled. no, no. I mean, like they've faced, they've struggled against better lineups and they've struggled against Ooh. worse lineups, Ooh. but this Houston team, Ooh. what better lineup I mean, I do they to, play? Come on. I would have to go look, but this Houston lineup, Bregman's been abysmal. You have, you've got Tucker Jordan's in a down year. I mean, it's not a good lineup. They're short Chaz McCormick. These aren't, this is not a good team. This is McCormick not a serious having like, a bad year anyway. But I mean, they are they're beat up. They're bringing guys up who aren't even high end prospects. They have not faced a better lineup than these two I, yet. This I year. would There's I would have no to go dig it up. But this the White Sox, Oakland, the, uh, I mean, the those aren't good. Oakland, but I mean, the Mariners, the Mariners lineups are terrible. Come on, I, this Boston's is not lineup's a good lineup. not good. We know that. I mean, the Mariners lineup. Uh, Mariners are first in their division. I mean, mm. there's it's they have four good hitters. Four good hitters. And That's the, not a great the lineup. Also, like, the Astros also have five great hitters. So. It's like uh, five great hitters. Uh, I, Altuve. Ray, I'm I'm still counting Tucker. Alvarez, Tucker, Pena, Diaz is hitting well. Like Devon's getting, hitting well this year. I, you were they're you, they're had, you had the well. best record in baseball. You go two and four. It's disappointing. You have oh, to no, play I'm better. Saying that. No, it's, I'm I, not I saying can't it's take not positive. disappointing. I'm not I, saying I it's not. I'm not saying it's not disappointing. I'm saying yeah. that. The starting pitching, it is it stinks that the starting pitching got better on this road trip and you only went two and four because that was the one missing component so far besides Jose Ramirez. But I still think that Atlanta and Houston have good lineups and your starting pitching got better. Well, so hopefully, does. Yes. So hopefully you can parlay this into something better against the uh the Angels who are have a terrible lineup, the yeah, Tigers who I mean, have a streaky lineup. You you don't you don't face another good lineup until you face Texas. Uh, I, so, I like that Tigers lineup quite a bit. Um, they they've struggled this year. They've I I, I haven't dug deep. I'll be honest. I have not dug good. deep. I have not dug deep. I'll just be honest it's, on that. It's right. It's Riley Green but, and and uh, Mark Hanna. That's been it. But um, like in general, the problem is like the starting pitching has been better, but the bullpen's not. Like the bullpen is definitely you know, which is mostly two guys. But we'll have just to see Gattison, how it goes. Gaddis and and Beatty, but it's. In the off, in the the, right the hitters have not done as well. Like N- Naylor, 
you know, is, is yeah. had some struggles. Quan has been fantastic. He's, he's kind of saving the lineup. We've seen nice rebounds with, with Rokio, but it's Bo Naylor is getting worse somehow. Like the starting pitching. I agree. I agree. It is. That is a nice thing to see some guys hopefully settling in. Um, you know, Logan Allen, I think could have been even better tonight if the, they, they made him throw 20 mm-hmm. extra pitches through defensive misses. Yeah. You know, it's like he, he would Girl. have been there. I totally agree with you on the pitching, but I feel like some of those things we we're counting on the, the offense has not been there. We haven't seen that offense. No, it hasn't, the other no. series. And then, um, yeah, I mean, I, I'm not going to nitpick the bullpen. It's been two dudes. So I'll, I'll pull back that statement. That was a poor statement by me, yeah. but I, I am a little worried about the offense because again, Houston's pitching isn't good and their bullpen has yeah, struggled this hit- year. And Aragetti didn't hit Aragetti. They did. I will say the offense on Tuesday did. They lost that game. The offense did come back from an eight three deficit off of Rafael Montero, who's been really good. That, true. So Very true. That was that was a good thing to see. So it was an inconsistent trip offensively. I will say that's that's probably the best you can say about it. So uh, it was a promising road trip, and it it kind of fizzled out, which says you know. We had higher expectations now based on their start, which we talked about a couple days ago. So yep. that's kind of where the Guardians are at right now. The Guardians are getting some people back off the injured list, both in the major leagues and the minor leagues. We will talk about that. We'll talk about what to do with Bo Naylor and the rest of this game and what needs to happen in the month of May for the Guardians on today's Lockdown Guardians. The Guardians are looking for all the pieces that are fitting to their roster to make things Back to what they were a couple of weeks ago after this uh, tough road trip. Same thing you're doing at eBay Motors. Passion, drive, and patience are the winning formula for championships. What keeps your ride or die alive? eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. Superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED lights, and more. Whether you're into speed, style, eBay Motors has you covered with over 122 million parts. For your number one ride or, ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with the eBay guaranteed fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or money back because with eBay motors, you're burning rubber, not cash with all of the parts you need and the prices that you want. It is easy to make your car into the MVP, the level of Jose Ramirez we expect and bring home huge wins. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only exclusion supply eBay guaranteed fit only available to us customers. Guardians come back home for a three-game set against the Angels, and you can check out all the action, depending on the weather, on your Sirius XM app. Just search Guardians and see an outfielder made a great catch. That's what happens. When well, you have they have guys who have more than who 20 reps out there. <laughs> That's but, true. Uh, I, shouldn't say, I shouldn't say not belong. I think Arias could play it, but uh, yeah, it's inexperience just experience. there. And the, the swipe at that ball was just a it was not great. So no, he got under that. Uh, I, w- I, w- I do want to point out just, you know, I, anyone who's going to be like, I'm going too negative. Like that's, isn't that two hits for Jimenez today as well? Like nice to see him. And one was with, I mean, he knocked him one of the runs, yeah. right? He had, yeah, you know, he had mm-hmm. the good hit early on. Right. And I feel like Naylor, we're seeing just some struggles. It's a lot of um, swinging. Yeah. Like, it's a, too early. It's in a count. lot of Jose Ramirez pop-up stuff that. Yeah. Him and him and Josh are both like, they both got the. Just off. Maybe it's yeah, not the Oscar stuff. Gonzalez. Maybe it's the the Naylor. And normally Naylor can be successful by swinging at everything, but I, I don't know. Like right now, it's I. I'll just throw this out. Um, we'll talk about it later. Let's do Gavin Williams. Yeah. So Gavin Williams, uh, according to the team, is cleared to throw again. He threw the other day, pain free. That's good. So he is back on track to get back to a rehab assignment. That's good news because we were definitely expecting it was not going to be good. So that's that's yeah, definitely 100%. better. When I was wrong. Yeah, when we had heard the other day, there was news coming up on that. You know, usually when you have that that planned uh, news the next day, it's not great. But it's very here's ominous. what I'll say about the Kevin Williams. Three hits for yeah, Brennan. Here's what, here's yeah, what I'll again. say about the Kevin Williams thing. Are you ready for Gavin Williams now? Yeah. yeah. The Gavin Williams thing, you know, when he was doing his sim games in Arizona, is when he re-experienced the pain in the elbow. So... Yes, it's good. He threw pain free the other day and he's cleared to resume activities again. He's got to ramp up still. So he's got to go to rehab assignment. The hard thing with, with Williams is I don't think you can really say for sure. This is like going in the right direction until he goes out on a rehab assignment and he pitches and he reports no pain. Like that's, that's the next step right there. So he is basically back 
at where he was like, you know, a couple weeks ago when he was starting his sim game process. So we're probably looking at, you know, end of May. Cause again, he's got to do rehab and he's got to build his arm strength back up to being a starter. So now we're talking about another month here and you just hope that his first rehab assignment, whenever he goes, he finishes it and he reports no pain. Cause other than that, you know, like I said, we're kind of back at square one. Yeah. I mean, platelet rich injections aren't a good thing. Uh, continual bouts of pain aren't a good thing. Uh, this, this wasn't like negative news, but it's also not great news. So it's just, it's a waiting game. It's, it's good news in the sense something else was wrong with him. Yeah. It's just, I think you have to be caught. You can be cautiously optimistic. I think that he's fine, but also wait to see what happens on his first rehab assignment. Other guy who is back and seems to be feeling good, at least based on his first start of the year, was George Valera. He had a double and a walk. I think he had two hits, actually, in his first game for Columbus. Um, just kind of surprising. He was back, and he played all nine innings, and he was off on Thursday. I know people were worried about he was out of the lineup on Thursday. It was his first game of the year, and he played a full nine innings on Wednesday, so he's fine. But good start for him out there. I mean, the, never had a problem walking. He's always had a good eye for the strike zone. And, you know, sometimes borderline and, and passivity. And he's had power. He's just never had the really the hit tool and the health. Those are the two big things for him. The brilliant question for George Valera is, you know, he missed a, he only missed a month in April. So, you know, not terrible. He definitely needs reps and he needs to, to go out there. But, you know, the Guardians are sorting through. Well, Brennan has been solid. He had two more hits. Than, or is that three hits tonight or two hits for Brennan? Three? All right. So you got three hits for Will Brennan. And he's been solid this year. Definitely trending in, in a good direction, I would say. Florial has, has had his moments. I just don't know how you, you know, we're already talking about how to work in Kyle Manzardo into this offense, which needs to happen very soon. But it's already hard enough to work him in as a first base DH guy. And then also talk about, look, George Valera at some point needs to make his major league debut this year because he is out of options after this year. So you need to get, reps for him in the majors and get a look at him and see what is next for, for him and the guardians. Like, is he part of the future or not? And, you know, again, I shouldn't, I shouldn't sit there and say, this is hard to make this roster fit, but these, because these things tend to work themselves out, but you know, you're playing Freeman in center and Valera is not a center fielder and you're messing around with Loriano and, you know, Brennan is good. And you've got Fry or uh, Arias playing some outfield, like, it's just weird to see you get so many lefties as it is. And Valera is a platoon bat again, as you know, as Manzardo might be too. So I just don't know where his roster fit is. I, again, I assume these things will take care of themselves, but just going to be interesting to see what's next for Valera. Like he does need to make his major league debut this year. They do need to get him reps because you know, he's out of options at the end of the year. Yeah. It's in, you know, it's the same issue they have with Noel as well. Um, so well, I'm not it, worried about him because I don't think I know. he's making it at no, this point. I don't, I don't think, I don't think he's either. I'm just bringing it up because to, to show just how many guys are in that situation, not, not to, yeah. for any other reason than that. Um, when you look at where he is and what you need to do with him, it is incredibly hard because are you going to delay Manzardo? Or, you know, what, what are you going to do in this situation? I think basically if Valera ends up making his debut this year, then things have gone poorly. Like, I think you're not going to force him up if things are going well, because then that means, you know, Brennan is stabilizing and not being. I, listen, I hope Will the Thrill, uh, he can still steal that nickname from Will Clark. I hope he can stay thrilling and not be this two good weeks, two bad weeks, two, you know, the consistency. That is, that's going to be the trick with Will Brennan is consistency. Um, mm -hmm. But if he is consistent, then you don't have a spot there. Mansardo's got to get the call up before Valera. So it, it, for me, it just, those two guys are, you know, in Mantardo in particular is a similar, I don't know if I want to say similar profile, but similar concerns, similar positives. Uh, it, I did have to laugh when you said the hit tools, the question, because if you really go deep on this team, when Valera was like the big prospect, everyone talked about, it's a beautiful swing. He's got a plus hit tool. Uh, we'll see if there's power. And then it's that whole thing where it's like, I, it was very clear very early on that he was power over hit, but there were some people who said plus hit tool there. And then he was going to be a center fielder. And we just, He's not. He's a he's a corner outfielder, and it's going to be a hard situation to be able to find for him 
So I really do think it's more about the team's success than his success. It is. It's just, I hate the idea. Like, I guess really what, what happens is do you, people want to dump on dump Florial for Manzardo, which, you know, that might happen long-term. Like again, Florial's had good, good moments. I don't know that Manzardo can't be better than him offensively because Manzardo, you know, we were joking about the hit tool thing. Manzaro actually does have a good hit tool. The yes. only issue with him is there might be there might be a platoon issue, but there already is with Valera. And Valera is a three true outcome outfielder who can't stay healthy. And they have enough you know, outfielders who can't stay healthy. Right. So Man- Manzardo might be a better fit long term for Florial's spot if this doesn't work out. But I mean, Florial's had his flashes. I do think Manzardo can give you more offense than Florial is, just because I think he's a better hitter. It just Agreed. limits your flexibility. But I don't. But I don't know where Valera fits in all this. And and the thing with Manzardo is doesn't have a forty man spot right now. Now that that's hard to clear because they have fodder. But Valera is out of options. So like in theory, you would like to see him first, but <laughs> that's not the way it can go because you know Manzardo is hitting the crap out of the ball, and Valera just came back from another injury. So. It's hard to see where it's going to fit, but I, I just don't see a way where I thought he was going to be trading in the offseason. If you don't get a look at him in the major leagues this season, you but, might just end up trading him anyway yeah. because what are you going to do? Because if he doesn't I, come up this year, like you said, that means Brennan's doing good, yeah. which there were a I lot of people in the There is order. trade value. Like who wants to trade for an off-injured platoon it, outfielder? It's definitely limited. It's definitely limited. And a lot of people wanted to get mad about the – Nolan Jones trade, the Will Benson trade. And again, because they had Oscar Gonzalez, but really it was the Guardians picking Will Brennan over those two guys. And there were a lot of people in this organization I had heard that preferred Will Brennan to George Valera. And I think we're seeing that being true, you know, just on availability alone, but other things as well. So it's just going to be tough for him to get a shot. But, uh, you know, it, he's a, a guy you've invested a lot of a time and money in and you want to see him at some point. All right, we're going to talk more about this game, what the Guardians need to do in the month of May, uh, what to do with Bo Naylor, and we'll get to the rest of the end of this game, and maybe at the end we'll talk about some college baseball this weekend if we have time. So all that coming up. So let's first talk about our good friends over at Prize Picks. Uh, I'm going to say the same thing I always say. The what makes Prize Picks different than other daily fantasy is it's just you versus numbers. You're not you don't have to worry about if someone else has inside intel. You don't have to worry if someone else uh, has a million simulations. None of that affects you. You just have to pick more or less in several easy, well-known stat categories, uh, and that's that's all it takes. It, you know, have the knowledge, have the experience, but you are not facing anyone else. It is you versus the numbers. And they always have special deals going on, like a chance to get 100 times your money on prize picks uh, as the world's best players take their games to a new level during basketball's postseason. Uh, there, there's always new testing skills on prize picks. You can have skills that turn $10 into 100 with just a few taps. So download the app or go to the website and use the code LOCKDOWNMLB for a first deposit match up to $100. Download the app or use the website. With the code locked on MLB, all lowercase, all one word for first deposit match up to one hundred dollars. Prize picks, pick more, pick less. It's that easy. What is easily addicting is Monopoly Go. You have to talk about this game because uh, Monopoly is already a fun game in its own right, and there's this twist on the classic uh, Monopoly Go. Uh, you can team up with friends for time tournaments where you work together, build up each other's boards. The more you win together, the more prizes you unlock. So as much as you want to be competitive in Monopoly Go, you can also work together, do a lot of fun things. I know Jeff the other day talked about getting his cat emoji for the board, yeah. which is a lot of fun. Again, new you fun get twists. Some new icons at all the time. Yeah, new icons. I, I have personally enjoyed just rolling the dice, going around the board, collecting some money, and then being able to build in different spots and knocking over people's uh, other buildings they've built. And when you land on the heist board, you can heist somebody else's vault. All you got to do is match a couple of cards up and boom, you've taken someone's money and you've built up your own war chest a little bit. It's a lot of fun. Um, So cool new playing pieces, traveling boards, uh, emojis for taunting friends. That's what it's really all about. Monopoly is, is dominating a ton of, a ton of include your own unique mini games like uh, digging for treasure robot, Pachinko, and there's other timed events to help you win big, massive multipliers. Something you win or rent frenzies, 
always something fun to discover in Monopoly Go. So get off always the bench a new event. and go. Always yes, an event. Go always on. go download it for free on your Google Play app or the App Store. Monopoly Go. Game on. Speaking of game on, the Guardians game will be back on Friday against the Angels without Mike Trout. That's sad, but maybe good for the One Guardians of the worst teams in themselves. baseball, legitimately. Yeah, back at, maybe they can get back in the win column. You can listen to how that unfolds on your SiriusXM app. Just search Guardians. Okay, the Bo Naylor conversation. We had this a little bit off air before. It's bad. Right now, He's... Yeah, right now he is not contributing anything defensively and he's not contributing offensively and to me this goes one of two ways jeff you this and this is really where the guardians i'm i'm and i'm not advocating for sending bonaire down right now because it's only been a month and as, as some of the indicators look pretty bad i don't think you can do that after a month i think there's still a little bit more um time you have to give him here because he was terrible his first month last year when he came up he was he was but you objectively bad he was. Right. But what you have to decide here is if it doesn't improve, you have to figure out this is where the Guardians need to know Bo Naylor and know what's best for him. They need to know whether or not the best thing for him is to play through it, which I think obviously at this point it's too early to send him down. But if it doesn't improve because it's ugly right now, you have to decide whether or not it's best for him to continue at the major league level and work through it or if it would be better for him to get a breather at AAA and, and refocus a little bit and, you know, start David Fry or something. But that's up to the Guardians to know what's best for their player. I, I you know, you and I, I personally don't think I could sit here and say one way or the other, but hopefully in the month of May, things turn around for him at some point. So I was curious, you know, just to do the, the Zanino watch. Uh, Mike Zanino, when he was cut last year, had a weighted runs created plus of a 64 and a negative defensive value of 0.3 right now, whereas Bo, through today's game, a 65. He's got one more point of weighted runs carry plus. He's essentially Zanino, with, but he does have a positive defense score. Um, though we're not always seeing that, uh, so I have to really dive into those. Defensive numbers are funny. Uh, but, yeah, he's just – it's it's bad, and I think you made a good point um, that he is – and that's ball game. Um, he's mm-hmm. – looking like the guy he was that year that uh, many people, including myself, mistakenly dropped him on prospect list. 2021, yeah, where he was striking out and popping everything up, and that was his offensive issue. So hopefully it's not a regression to that, and there's some things they can go back through and fix. Um, what we know about Bo Naylor is that he is a very yeah. hard worker. He cares a lot. You know, he's obviously very athletic and talented, so you always want to bet on guys like that. So I do think it'll turn around. But again, like like I said, you just have to decide whether or not that if it doesn't, if it's better for him to ch- just work through at the major league level or if AAA is a better option for that, which they don't have a lot of good options. It would just be David Fry. But And uh, I know you so mentioned – oh, yeah. I just want to throw one other thing out. And uh, you were mentioning, you know, Florio. It's, again, his, his K percentage after today is, is over 40%. Um, and he was at like a 121 weighted runs created plus. Now, this is the early small sample size, but he's down to a 106. Um, Jose is is also below 100 after the last two games, which is you know part of the troubling thing. It's that's what has to change in the month of May for the Guardians. Is we talked about Bo Naylor. Um, so what the Guardians need to do to take advantage of this, they're now 20 and 11. Um, the starting pitching has to improve, and it has. You've gotten – Ben Lively's gotten off to a good start, better than we could have hoped for, really. Tanner Bybee had a great start in this road trip. Tristan McKenzie had a good start in this road trip. Logan Allen had a good start in the road trip. So I would say the starting pitching in May is off to a better start than it was in April. Carlos Carrasco, you know, that is what it is. I don't know. But at least four four fifty rotation has has kind of stabilized at this point. You'll figure out what to do there. Um, Jeff, I would also say that the bullpen, they need to take advantage of bullpen resources. I don't know what happened with Nick Sandlin in this game. It, I, it didn't matter in the end, truthfully. Maybe it did because maybe they should have left him in instead of Tyler Beatty. But he threw two pitches and they took him out. I didn't really understand that. He didn't throw it all on Wednesday. And they already had a short bullpen tonight. So I don't know what happened there. But hopefully he's okay because uh, Nick Sandlin's been pretty good. And he's had some injury yeah. concerns in the past. So, But 
you know, Hentges comes back Friday. At some point, they'll have to take advantage of Andrew Walters. Like, they just need to make sure they take advantage of their relief depth because that's what's going to carry them while this bullpen gets taxed, um, even though the starting pitching has gotten better. And then I would also say the month of May, Jose Ramirez has to get back to being Jose Ramirez. His at-bats were better on Thursday, but, like, if the Guardians are going to, you know, take advantage of this this good start they've gotten off to um, – offensively they're going to need Jose to get back to being him because other guys are kind of slipping a little bit and they're going to need him to carry the middle of the order. Yeah. You, this team, you know, two of their best three hitters in terms of our expectations are massively underperforming. And, you know, we've seen a little less offense these last few days. Um, and, and against, you know, Justin Verlander is Justin Verlander, but he's also not Justin Verlander anymore. Like he's a guy who, doesn't miss as many bats and you know he's still solid he's still a very good pitcher but he's not like the verlander uh arigetti is not good they, they needed to jump on him so we're hoping to see that rebound and just consistency from all the young guys like rocchio it's been a good series for him um mm-hmm. brennan was great uh and you know manzardo they've got to figure out how and that's the thing i see a lot of people being like Loriano for him, or someone's like cut it's Austin Hedges. I'm like, it, it's well, Hedges not going anywhere. Yeah. I know, but it's like where you have to figure out the plate appearances because if you promote him, then with the way Brennan's playing, Brennan's your side, then like, I mean, I'm sure people will be fine. Florial and Gabby just don't get you know, and you're also taking at bats from Freeman in that case, likely. Like, it's going to be a you have to figure out where you're where you're getting pieces from and. But you got to do it uh, on the other side because, I mean, Brennan with his today, you have Brennan, Jimenez, Naylor, Quan, and then Fry are the only guys with above a league average way to run straight plus. So you need, oh, and Florio. But, you, you know, you, you could need throw consistency. You could throw Freeman and Brennan into a platoon in center field, I guess, and then open up yeah. right field for Florio and open up DH for Manzardo. You could do it that way and then leave Arias as the, as the right fielder. Um against lefties i suppose or move i don't know there's other ways you can do it but so like uh yeah, Florio the Arias the platoon, do two full yeah platoons. My, yeah it wouldn't couldn't hurt it's, yeah. that's kind of how it has to go and although again arias you know wasn't good against lefties last year so who knows he's been better this year but hard to tell at this point uh one of those two i'd like to see arias or rocchio just kind of establish themselves in the month of may just one of those two yeah. start to take off offensively and you start to start to see like okay one of these two guys for sure is a future big leaguer, no matter what. That would be good to see in the month of May as well as getting Jose back, the starting pitching, hopefully improving uh, from what they did on this road trip. And then hopefully you get Kevin Williams back. Hopefully getting Sam Hentges back will be a help. And then hopefully you're facing the Angels, who stink. Yeah, yeah they're really bad. Beat them. And then a big series against Detroit next week, which, uh, you know, they're – their offense is a little inconsistent. It's okay sometimes. And then their pitching is obviously really, really good. And then you get the White Sox. So it's going to be interesting two weeks for the Guardians to start May. It is. A uh, quick minor league note. We didn't have time for college. Uh, still haven't seen Chase Delotter. We will see if the foot injury, how that continues to go. I would not be out surprised. Go Thursday. I would not be surprised if he is on the IL come Friday. Yeah. And it's the same foot as a year ago. So uh, I, I don't think it's going to be a big issue, but it is just want to note all of that. Um, yeah. But yeah, that's something we had to talk about. Uh, thank you all for joining us. Rating and reviewing, downloading and helps, especially joining us on a loss. And especially after losing for the last six, we appreciate all of you jumping in. Thank you. And go, go guardians. Go.